Welcome back, everyone, to On.net. I'm your host, James Montemagno, and today we are continuing our series with the fine folks over at Wilderness Labs and their meta platform of amazing .NET related IoT devices. Now, we've had a lot of videos specifically talking about the devices themselves and how you can read data and connect to different sensors. But today, we're going to do something a little bit different, Jorge, which is talking about kind of client server esque in a way, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, um, as we've seen in another video where we're doing data that is, uh, we're sending data over to Meadow Cloud. But in this case, uh, we want to have it say on a dashboard or something, we want to get that data that doesn't necessarily, we don't want to go to our Meadow Cloud platform to see on the website those logs. We want to get them somewhere. So you can actually generate an API key to interact with the web API to Meadow Cloud and start getting these data, and you can put it on your applications. That's really cool, because if there's data anywhere, or you're sending data from different devices, like you're saying, I can envision a world, even at my house, right? We have like you know different temperature sensors, and you kind of need that hub in a way yeah. to do it. But I could imagine you could also crunch the numbers and do other stuff with it, I'd assume, too, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's not even just displaying. Like You could probably take that data from the cloud, I assume. You can tell me if I'm completely wrong. <laughs> Um, and then you could actually crunch data in here. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. And um, so th the thing is that after sending all that data, the information is like it's it's there in the cloud. But where are you going to get it, right? Yeah. So where are you going to put it? So the the intention about this demo is we have a, a client side, and in this case, it's particularly we're using a project lab to act as a client, so we can get that information. So if you zoom in in our project lab here, we have a micro layouts a HMI interface. And what this one's doing is every minute is querying our Meadow Cloud API. Oh, cool. It's querying, it's getting the last 10, 10 values of our log events from the other project lab that was sending environmental data. And they're plotting them here on this new line chart control that we have on micro layouts. Wow, cool. So it's also like the, the convenience for project lab that also has buttons that we can actually switch wow. the different types. So I have the temperature, the pressure, humidity, and uh, you can go back and forth. And you can add even more things. You can also like make it change uh, the units, for example, from imperial to, to metric as well. Um, so the possibilities are endless here. So That's yeah. really, really neat. Yeah. I mean, I love that because, you know, to me, as a mobile app developer myself, that's often what I'm doing is I'm often making web requests, pulling down data, displaying the data, doing a bunch of stuff. Um, so that's really, really neat. You want to take a look at it and how yeah. we actually get this on the screen? Yeah, I'm excited. Sure. Let's yeah. check it out. The first thing I will need, uh, again, is you need a Meadow Cloud account. So be sure to, to sign up for that. And once you provision your device and you're sending all that, uh, that data and to your cloud, you also, if in order to use the web API, you need to do get an API key. So if you Makes go sense. to here, you go to your API key section, and then you create a new API key. And you can set things like uh, what's the scopes or permissions that you want to enable. You can also do commands, which we'll cover in a different video, that you can actually send. Uh, send commands to Project Lab to do things. Oh, cool. And the search one is the one that we'll query to get information, right? So, and this is familiar for anyone that's used API keys. Basically, the scopes are, from what I'm, what I'm here is like, if someone tries to do a command or search and it's not checked, it won't let it, basically, exactly. correct? Okay, yes, cool. yes, yes. And so you can also specify the duration, and then the actual value of the API key will be shown once. So you've got to make sure you copy that and put it somewhere safe. Cool. And so once you have the API key, then we can go into Visual Studio. And I'll show you real quick here. Um, we'll go to the Meadow Cloud client. And again, we're going through that pattern of main controller with subcontroller. So I have a subcontroller that is a, the, what is called a cloud controller. Mm. It's the one that is sole intention is to get me the data from Meadow Cloud. Got it. And so in this one is a method called sensor readings. And this one, it, it basically, we're just doing, we're doing the, the, the we're creating the HTTP uh, client, and we're doing a default uh, the request header. So we're pasting, and we're putting here our API key. So yeah. when we're doing that request, we're sending the key, and they validate that it's actually you, and you get the information. So makes sense. And we have a search uh, a search API that you can also specify a bunch of other different parameters. You could do the device ID because you also need to make sure which device you want to talk to. Yeah. And you can also do like what event ID you want to mm. bring up. You can do things like size, like how many records do you want me to return. In this case, I'm returning 50, even though I'm using uh, 10 at, at a time. And you can do things like sort by and sort order. So you can bring and massage your data on the server, and you'll return you just exactly what you need. So Very cool. Yeah. And then just return a JSON blob, or how does the data yes, pass back that's to right. you? So yeah. it returns our JSON blob here, um, a JSON uh, object, and you deserialize it. And I have here in 
my DTOs, it has you know, like the data transfer object. And it has a group of classes that you'll use to deserialize all this. And eventually, you get your measurement data, which is this one here that gives you temperature, pressure, and humidity. Nice. It's very yeah. cool because you know, I think as a .NET developer myself, you know, that you know, I don't play around with IoT devices too much. Yeah. However, like all this code makes 100% sense to me, right? I've written right. this code about a billion times. Yeah. You know, I've called different API backends and I've passed different parameters exactly. to query the data. And then you're just using standard system text yeah. JSON to deserialize hey, it. Hey, we are C Sharp guys here. We're all very familiar with .NET. So let's bring .NET to hardware, which is what we're trying to do here. And you can see how easy it was to put this together. And um, another quick thing that I wanted to show before we wrap up here is the line, the line chart controller, because yeah, this screen cool. is built with micro layouts again, which nice. is really nice. And I have this thing called a line chart. And we specify here in the load data layout. Uh, let me scroll down here for a bit. Yes, here we go. So I, here I specify, I, it, everything acts as an absolute layout. So you, get, you need to give uh, coordinates for x and y, and mm -hmm. also the width and height. So this is what the four, the four uh, values here uh, mean. And then you can also specify things like the background color. You want to show the axis color as well. Show uh, the labels for the for the axes as well. Yeah. And this also does uh, automatic uh, scaling. So when your data, uh, your date ranges is, is are very different. They're trying to do its best to try to keep it together and not go yeah. like either like super on the top or close to the origin. It'll do its best to try to rearrange the curve uh, nicely. And so. We also have a line chart series, which is the one that is where actually we're going to drive the curve. Mm -hmm. And you can add different line chart series into the same line chart. So you can do, if you have three different temperatures, so they're all the same uh, range and, and, and also the same units, of course, then you can add them and they'll all graph at the same, oh, cool. under the same axis. Yeah. That could be cool, for example, if you were you know, querying maybe multiple of the devices, you want to display all three, like maybe you, you know, you're thinking of your house or you have an upstairs, downstairs basement. Yeah. Now you have a central portal where it's displaying all of them in real yeah. time. And you can color code them as well. Mm -hmm. Notice you have a line color and point, col uh, point color as well. So cool. you can just change the colors there, and then it'll indicate you, oh, the office room is more hotter, and it's the red one, or the living room is the blue one, things like that. Cool. Um, so yeah, it's very easy to put together. And once again, this is also in the Meadow Cloud Samples repository on GitHub. So you can uh, feel free to take a look, and you can run it yourself if you have a project lab, or if you can also just try uh, using uh, Meadow Feather. You can try to mm. strip this apart a little bit and just yeah. try to get to run the web API if you want to give that a try. Very cool. Yeah. This is awesome, Jorge. Yeah. I love it. And I love visual things <laughs> and plotting little things. This reminds me of just like you know, standard, almost like mobile development. But now it's a mobile yeah. little IoT device, which is the, so cool. This project lab is such a treat. I, I carry it like everywhere. Like even yeah. on a plane, it's very nice to just code. You know, no longer need those extra wires and breadboarding to do all that. And yeah. the button might fall off. And like everything is just compact In into there. that single form factor. And yeah, it's fantastic. Very cool. Well, we will put links to everything that Jorge showed off today. And of course, to all the awesome devices over at Wilderness Labs. But I'll also put a link below to check out the entire series. So if you're just getting started and you're like, wow, this is cool. How do I do that? Well, there's a bunch of videos right here on the .NET YouTube showing you everything about Wilderness Labs, Meadow, all their different devices, things like that. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Jam that subscribe button. I really appreciate you all tuning in. So until next time, I'm James Montemagno. This is on.NET. Thanks for watching. <laughs>